is it going to become a thing? Are we just going to have a thing where like every year we get a movie about repeating a day over and over again? I'm not saying that people are being lazy or that, you know, it's bad to do this kind of story. It's just that we had what we had Groundhog's Day in like 93 or something like that. Then nothing for like 20 years and then all of a sudden a deluge of stories about reliving the same day over and over again. And most of them referencing Groundhog's Day in one way or another. It's kind of weird that we keep that this keeps happening. Feels like we're reliving the same story over and over again. As for this movie, it's charming. Uh, it's a decent enough story. Like the, it's kind of does a sort of Palm Springs approach where there's two people stuck in the loop, uh, but instead of one of the characters following into the loop, it's this guy has already been living in the loop, and then he runs into somebody else who has already who has also been living in the loop, and he becomes obsessed with her. And trying to, and they form a sort of friendship. It becomes like this tepid romance, but it's only one way. And it's it's a lot of young adult romance garbage. I wasn't really into that part. But um, I'll say this much: Kyle Allen, the lead actor here, he's got potential. I would not be surprised if he went on to be a leading man in some regard, at least on TV or something like that, because. The dude has a lot of uh, charm to him, and if given good material, he would be excellent as a sort of leading man character, or maybe a love interest, or like a, something. He uh, he's could he's able to do the sort of melodrama thing. I wouldn't be surprised if he could make that switch into full on comedy. He's got some decent timing, so he's good in this movie. I wasn't into Catherine Newton all that much though. Like the whole movie deals with uh, Alan's character being obsessed with her, thinking like, "Oh my God, she's amazing." But I didn't see what he saw. Like, I didn't get the feeling that she was amazing. I got the feeling that she was a bitter... Once again, this sort of cynicism for lack of a personality thing is something I'm seeing a lot of. And I think it's because a lot of writers see themselves as being cynical. And what that basically means is they're an asshole who wants to try and differentiate themselves by being an asshole and saying, I'm just being real. I'm keeping it real. It's the keeping it real of writing story, writing characters. And like, nah, you know, nah, man. Like, you being cynical doesn't mean you have a personality now. It just means you're an asshole and you aren't, you aren't willing to at least admit you're an asshole. But then at the same time, she'll all of a sudden be all into him uh, showing all the, these crazy perfect moments uh, around town and playing up this romance bit and then completely do a 180 and be like not into him at all and it's like if it doesn't feel it feels like she was two separate characters combined into one and part of it is like I'm a cynical I know you know blah, 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 I know so much and then all of a sudden oh wow isn't this amazing are you a cynic or are you not are you being cynical or are you just pretending to be cynical? Uh, it, it's the writer pretending to be cynical in lieu of a personality. Never mind. I think it also kind of doesn't sit well with me that it tries to play up the whole, like, unreciprocated feelings and the guy having to get over his own ego because the girl doesn't like him back. And that would be one thing if they didn't end up together. But the movie makes sure they end up together because of course they do. They're the two leads. Of course they end up together. Why wouldn't they end up together? Why can't they just be platonic friends who have shared the same experience? Why couldn't that be the end of the story, guys? What? <laughs> what, we can, people, men and women can't be friends now? Oh, nah, no, nah, of course not. Not in young adult romance. Now nah, the two leads have to end up together. Otherwise, what was the point? It can't have been about them growing as people, having mutual respect, and just staying friends and not hooking up. Don't mind me. I, let me climb off of my soapbox here. But yeah, like, it's... It, it, this whole thing... And then once it actually focuses on uh, the girl, it becomes all about her over... You know, dealing with the fact that her mom's dying of cancer. Okay. Uh... Apparently that's the thing now. It can't, you know, she can't just not be into the guy. She has to be dealing with the trauma of 
you know, losing somebody to cancer. What? Man, the the hurdles that some of these writers do to stick with the usual tropes of a genre, you know? I think a lot of these issues that I'm noticing come from the fact that this was adapted from a short story. It was adapted by the author, and you can really feel that this was based on a short story because there is a lot of padding. Like, it's not just padding, it's padding and then it's just like aimless meandering because, like, there's the bit, the whole, the title refers to something they do in the second act where they map out all of these perfect moments that they, that they find, uh, throughout the town they live in. You know, things like, um, a janitor, you know, showing he's a, a talented musician or some little girl proving she's good at, be, at being on a skateboard to a bunch of dudes who suck at it or, uh, watching an eagle grab a fish, like, from six feet away or a shot of a dude who um, is sitting at a perfect point where uh, the the wings on a on a van make it look like he's an angel? You know, weird little idiosyncrasies like that. And so a bunch of the movie is just that, and it feels like they just padded it out because there was nothing else story wise to happen. It was just here's a bunch of things that happened for this map that ultimately doesn't matter. And I feel like... Like, it's one thing that the map doesn't matter and get or get them out of... the get them out of the loop. But... It just... Like, at least kind of have a point. And it, this doesn't really have much of a point. It definitely feels like they had the main story, realized it was too short, and just, like, pumped it full of air to kind of fill out the the empty space. You know, that's the thing, is that you can sometimes adapt a short story into being a feature length, and it works, because you expound on certain things that the story didn't. This movie doesn't really expound that much on what's going on. It just, it just kind of pads the story out to make it feature length. I think the biggest waste is that by the end, there's a point going into the third act where um, the where the dude is like, I just realized it's not about me. I thought I was the hero. Turns out she was the hero all along. And then we shift focus to her perspective. But then there's only 20 minutes left in the movie. Not counting the credits. So you basically just decided to switch up the perspective 20 minutes before the end. To try and make it seem like you learned something. Why not, why not showcase their perspectives equally and then have him personally realize... Like, I get the gimmick. I get the gimmick that you're switching the perspective because he realizes it's not about him. Why not just showcase more about her, show her perspective, and then have him realize that he was being an egotistical dude and then, then shift more focus over to her? Like, why, are, why spend all this time with the dude and then 20 minutes at the, before the end decide, whoop, we're flipping the script? It feels like a, it just feels like a gimmick more than anything. And it feels like a wasted opportunity when we could have been spending more time with her and learning more about her, but they decided just to cram it all in the last 20 minutes. And not to mention the fact that for all of these movies that do the whole Groundhog's Day reference and be like, oh, looks like we're living in Groundhog Day. You remember that movie? That sure was a movie that happened and it sure did share this same premise. Yeah, for all of that, they missed the point of Groundhog's Day, which is it was about Bill Murray becoming a better person, not trying to understand why he's stuck in a loop. Like, fun bit of trivia here. The studio demanded that Harold Ramis and Danny Rubin explain where the loop came from. And specifically, they were like, what, you want to make it a gypsy curse? Then they're just like, yep, make it a gypsy curse. Because that would have kept it a classic for sure. Making sure, and they even shot the scene. They shot the scene where Bill Murray runs into the gypsy and gets cursed to be in the loop. That was almost in the movie, and Harold Ramis rightfully decided, nah, that ain't going in there because it's stupid and misses the point. 
It's a terrible idea to try and explain it because we didn't need an explanation. Now, every movie that does this has to go into fourth dimensional theoretical physics and seeing the numbers flash by like it's a beautiful mind or whatever. And it's like, uh, we don't need you to take, a, take like 10 minutes out of the movie to explain theoretical physics to us in order to m explain why there's a loop. Like, just, it's magic. You don't have to explain shit, you know? It's just, just let the thing happen and focus on the characters. That's the main thing that made Groundhog's Day work, and it's the one thing that these movies keep fucking up. It's the one thing that is the main thing that made Groundhog's Day so, so much fun. Like, imagine, imagine the timeline where we got Groundhog's Day and, it, and we had to deal with the fact that, it's, that it perpetuates the whole gypsy curse trope. Like, imagine that timeline where we hit, where people were adamantly defending, Groundhog's Day is a great movie! It perpetuates the gypsy stereotype. Yeah, well, it's a great movie! And we have, to, we have to deal with stupid, stupid fanboys defending a movie that perpetuates that horrible stereotype and, you know, further, you know, further perpetuates, the, you know, the, this idea of the Romani people in a bad light because... Some studio executive just refused to let something go unexplained. And that would be a terrible timeline. I don't want to live in a timeline where we have to defend a, the, the gypsy curse trope in, a, in Groundhog's Day. It was rightfully cut and left out, and we don't need it. And that's the thing is, if you're gonna do this story... You don't need to mention Groundhog's Day because you're just being a, me a meta referencing self, you know, self referential. Like, oh, look at us, we're referencing Groundhog's Day. You hear? You we, we are original. You're pointing out how unoriginal you are. Like when um, Happy Death Day did it, it was a cute reference at the end. And it was just a throwaway joke. And, like, nowadays it's just, like, you, you have to show how smart you are by referencing the fact that Groundhog's Day exists. Because you can't just let the story be itself. Ugh. It didn't help that towards the end, and I think what is the actual climax, is Catherine Newton going the beautiful mind or um, uh, uh, goodwill hunting and, like, uh, seeing the numbers. It's all coming together now. Fourth dimensional cube! And... It, it reeks of something that would be posted to r slash I am very smart. I'll say that much. Like, oh, look at us. We are so smart. Look at our smartness. I am smart. I am so smart. You aren't smart for trying to point do all of this stuff. You're actively just trying to make us think you're smart. Just get to the point, dude. And yeah, it ultimately doesn't really amount to anything, I don't think. I, once again, I, this whole thing has felt weird and not very coherent. Maybe because it was badly adapted from a short story. Like, I'm not even trying to say that the movie is bad. There's really bad young adult romance movies out there. I think my issue is it's trying so hard. It really wants you to make you, make you think it's smart. But it's just so lazy. You know, it's that kind of smart where the person thinks they're so smart that they don't have, they can, they can half-ass it, and it's just kind of lazy. So they're not really smart. They may be smart. Who knows how smart they are? But they don't try that hard, and they're not really putting in the effort to make it better. So, yeah, it's not, you know, it's not bad, but it's not very good either. It's just meh.